Hey everyone, it is Monday and not Sunday. I miss doing my Sunday update video. So what is up with that? Well, we went to St. Pete yesterday and did kind of a late Christmas get together with part of the family that they were sick around Christmas time and nobody wants to spread that kind of love, right? So we went down I spent the day in St. Pete, so I didn't get a chance to do my video. And I was actually thinking, I didn't have a whole lot to show you, but when I'm seeing it all sitting here in front of me on the table, I actually have a lot more and got a lot more done than I thought I did. So, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. So, when I was showing you guys the lovies that I made from... The Mama Made Minis book. And I had the unicorn and I had asked a question about the mane and the eyes. Most people said the mane was like it was. Some people said make it a little longer. People were saying the bigger eyes versus the smaller eyes. Some people were saying sew them on. You know, don't use glue and put the felt because, you know, the babies could still pull the felt eyes off. So I hemmed and hawed about it and finally came up with a solution that I think is okay, but when I was attaching them, it kind of shifted a little bit on me. So I made some crochet eyes from a pattern from Joe's Web. She has a video here on YouTube. She also sells the pattern on Etsy and well, let me just show you. So, I gave the unicorn these eyes. They're crocheted. And the colored part, I forget which part of the eye, the iris, um, I did in uh, close to the color of this part in the main. Um, so these are, I tried sewing them on, but because these stitches are a lot looser than if I was to use the normal size hook I would use with this yarn, it was like pulling on it. So what I did is I sewed it down in the center through the black part and also used glue. So it is glued and sewn. So it should not come off. But I think those turned out pretty good, especially for my first time doing the crocheted eyes. Now, unfortunately, like I said, it shifted. I tried getting them a little close together, but you know how it goes. Even though I had them pinned in place, it still moved on me. So we did that. And that kind of finishes up that project. So then the first thing that I made this week was um, Toby's making noise again. Every time I turn the camera on, these cats like to misbehave. So anything that you hear strange in the background, just know that it is Toby. Oh boy. So anyhow, the first thing that I made was a, a pattern from Toy Story Patterns on Etsy. And they have this pattern called The Puppy. And when I'm looking at this pattern, what I see, even though they did it theirs in brown and white, I see Clifford. You know, Clifford, the big red dog. So I made that puppy pattern in red. And he does, he looks like Clifford, the big red dog. Now this, this is an easy pattern to do. You are only sewing on the muzzle. You crochet in the legs, crochet in the arms. I'm pretty sure I crocheted in the tail. I don't remember. <laughs> but so I think the only thing that you're sewing on is the muzzle. Now they used a, um, like embroidered a nose, but I used 
a safety nose and I was looking at it and I'm like, is that a dog nose or is it a bear nose? I used it, so it's a dog nose on this one. But I think he turned out so cute. And it just re so much reminds me of Clifford the Big Red Dog. So I will definitely make this again. I don't know if I'll do red again. We'll see if he sells or not. But it, it was it's an easy pattern to do. And it just it turned out really cute. I like it. So then it's so funny because Heather from Cottontail Crafts by Heather and Sue from Crafty Sue 519 and myself, we were like me chatting with me chatting with Heather and me chatting with Sue, but we've all said the same thing that we keep trying to be a pattern tester for different designers on Instagram and we never get picked. Well, last week, Sue got picked. And I was like, yay for you, you know? And so she did this little terrier dog. It turned out cute, but it was really small. And I told her, I think it would look absolutely great if you did it in acrylic and it would be the perfect size for a keychain. And you know, there are a ton of dog lovers out there. So then this week, I got picked for one and I was like, oh boy, miracles never happen. Or yeah, miracles do happen. So I did a pattern test for Bonnie K Crochet and she, <laughs> the release date is January 24th. So I don't have a link that I can give you to the direct pattern, but I can link her shop in the description for uh, over on Etsy. But I commented and shared her post and she picked me. So she likes to pick um, a couple of new testers each time. You know, people that she's experienced with working with, but also people that are new. So I got to be one of her newbies. But she just released this Paris the Poodle pattern. And so I did it. <laughs> And it's cute, but I don't like the eyes. Hi, Toby. <laughs> I don't like the eyes. I think, for me, my preference, the way I like them, I would do smaller eyes that had some big fluffy eyelashes on it. But this, this pattern is really simple to follow. The format is wonderful. You're only sewing two things on, the tail, and the uh, nose, snout, muzzle, whatever you want to call it, this part here. So, well, and then you would have to sew or glue on the little um, cheek things. So, <laughs> it turned out cute. I used uh, Parfait Chunky, Seal Gray, and White. But let me tell you, this one was one of those bad skeins of white. And I fought this the whole way. So... It made doing the project not enjoyable. So I am going to make another one of these but and do smaller eyes like I would prefer with the eyelashes and see how it comes out. But it works up really nice. Like you make the arms, you make the little ears, um, you make the snout, you make the bows all separate. And then you start from working from the bottom up and the head is crocheted on so you don't have to worry about getting your head faced in the right direction and all that. But I think a little smaller eyes and this would be just adorable. So Paris the Poodle by Bonnie K Crochet. So I did that. And at that point, that is when I was thinking, I haven't done very much this week. You know, I had the eyes on the unicorn and Clifford and the poodle. And I'm just like, I haven't done much at all. But then it was pattern release day from All From Jade for her new Drake the dinosaur, the baby dinosaur. So I had to buy that. 
And the first one that I did, I did with um, Big Twist Posh in this really bright green and this peachy orange color. So what I'll say, I love, I love the shape of the face. And she has you um, indent the eyes. So it really gives the head a nice shape. And then there's a part up here where you stitch in and pull down to give a little dent in the head. And I must have done something wrong with that part because it really doesn't show up. But it's not a big deal. And it's no so. So you start at the head and you're working your way down. And when you get to the legs, you leave two openings and an opening for the tail. And then you go back and work crochet it as you go onto the thing. Well, the tail's fine, that was no problem. But when you get on this side, and now you've got your second leg, it's kind of awkward, like, I felt like my own hands were in the way. So Heather had also gotten the same pattern. We both bought it on release day. <laughs> and we were discussing the, the leg situation and both of us felt really awkward with it. So we like put our heads together and well, more Heather than me, but we came up with a way to do the legs and still have it be no so. But before we did that, I made this one and then I said, I wanna see how it looks in acrylic. So I made one in acrylic yarn. And I think he is so cute. Um, I used a variegated and let me tell you, the legs were really tough on this. But while I was doing this, I tried an experiment. When you get to the first round where you're doing the decreases to form the bottom, I did back loop instead of just crocheting through like the pattern says, and it sits a whole lot flatter than this one does. This one's a little wobbly. And they, they could just be me. But this, because I did that, it helps it sit. It just sits a lot flatter. It, was easier. So this is Big Twist and acrylic for a size comparison. Then Heather and I, you know, we're talking about the legs. So then we each did one trying this, a different way of doing the legs. So you make the legs separate and then you crochet them in as you go, but you don't close up the leg. So the legs have eight stitches and you, the first go around where you would leave the opening, you crochet in four stitches of the eight on the leg to the body. And don't forget to leave the opening for the tail, which I did and I had to frog. So this one took me much longer than it should have. And then when you come around for the second pass, you pick up the other four stitches and it turned out pretty good. Now what we, when we were experimenting with this, it was like do six, yeah, six single crochets, increase to 12, do back loop only for 12, and then two more rounds of 12, which make them stick out a little bit more than on this one. So we were talking about, we'll leave off one of the rounds of 12, you know, cause then you're gonna decrease down to eight. Now, originally I had added another round of eight after I did the decrease, but then I pulled it out because once I stuffed the little leg, it really looked big. So when it wasn't stuffed, it was like, oh, it needs another round. So I did it a round of eight, but it was, yeah, once they had the stuffing in it, it was like mega, mega long. So, and again, on this one, I did the back loop only for the bottom and it sits perfect. I mean, I don't, it doesn't wobble at all. So then I got out my clearance yarn from Hobby Lobby that, um, 
variegated, I forget what it's called now, and a seven millimeter hook and made another one. Now, because this one being so much bigger because of using this yarn, I did leave the extra round of 12 in the leg, but did it the same way that Heather and I came up with. And he turned out so cute. Now for a size comparison, big posh, big twist posh. And this, they say this is a seven weight, but this is a five millimeter hook. This is a seven millimeter hook. And it's just so pretty. I need to, you know, I, I say when I go yarn shopping, I try to tell myself stay away from the variegated yarn because it's hard to come up with a stitch pattern and a project that makes it look nice in crochet. Knitting, they come out gorgeous. But sometimes they just don't look right in crochet. But I, this is the only variegated this is the only variegated I have in the plush yarn, the chenille, whatever you want to call it. But it just looks so cool. And then for his spikes, I used um, Michael's Home Slim in the mustard because there's, you know, a little bit of mustard in this. But oh, it's just so pretty. Out of the four, I like this one. And I, I do like the one in acrylic. I didn't put the spikes on it. But this one's like the newborn. He hasn't started to grow any spikes yet. But they turned out really cute. I mean, she is a great pattern writer. But sometimes there are things that we can use our um, creative license to make things a little easier for us, for ourselves. So... That's what we did. Then I have not come across a not Baranosaurus, Baranosaurus pattern that is not confusing. So one thing I am really good at is scrolling through Instagram. Posting, not so much, but scrolling, yeah, I can scroll through Instagram. So I'm scrolling through Instagram and I come across a Baranosaurus pattern that is no so. And the other one that I've used is also no so. And I sent I sent the, the uh, links over to Heather and to Sue. And I'm like, what do you think of this? Because the legs were done so different than any other pattern I've ever done. And they both kind of said it was confusing. I think Sue tried one. So I'm like, I'm going to try it because I really want a good, easy to understand, easy to follow pattern for a Brontosaurus. This is not that pattern. I like how it looks. And, you know, you can't really complain. It's a free pattern. I figured out the legs, because like you make one, you set it aside. Then you make a second leg and you attach the two. Then you make your third leg, set it aside, make the fourth leg and attach those two. Then you got two legs here and two legs here. So you're gonna put it together and slip stitch down the middle and then you start crocheting around. And I just, that just seemed kind of odd to me. But they turn out all right. So this was my first one, and I did Parfait Chunky in the color of Hibiscus, and it turned out okay. Now, when I got to the tail, I couldn't, my stitch counts just did not line up. I, I don't know what I was doing wrong, but I just kept going, and if it said, you know, do a single crochet, do an increase, do a decrease, whatever, I just kept going. Didn't matter where the round ended, I just kept going, and it turned out it turned out decent. I mean, it looks pretty good for a Baranosaurus. So then I said, well, let me try it again. You know, maybe I'm just like out there, you know, my brain just like was out there. So I did one in blue, this dark blue. So I'm, these, 
these are small enough, they don't use much yarn, that some of my scraps, I was trying to pick colors from that to use. So, again, um, I go through and then I get to the tail and it just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't make it match up. And it looks slightly different than this one because I just kept going. I'm like, it's a tail, you know? Um, I would have preferred it be aimed more down, I think, but it's fine. So then I said, I'm gonna try this a third time. So I pulled out some Bernat, one of the few that I have that's kind of a variegated, it, it's not the prettiest of colors, but it's a Bernat baby. And I made the legs one round bigger. And uh, again, of course, with the tail. So this is the Bernat. This was my first one for a size comparison. Now the blue one is just a little bit smaller than the pink. Um, could be tension, could be there wasn't as much fluff on this yarn as there was on this one. They're both parfait chunky. But again, this tail ended up looking just slightly different than this tail. They're cute. For the most part, it's easy to follow, but when you look at, get rid of that tail, and you look at the shape of this dinosaur, if you were to add a couple of little horns up top, you know, use the right color, and then just have a loose tail, this thing is so much shaped like a giraffe. This one more so than this, so the arch in the back, and same with that one. That one has more of a swoop. I don't know what I did, but they all look different. Same pattern. So I have that. Again, the, the, it is not the Barontosaurus pattern that I'm going to settle with. I'm going to keep looking. I showed you guys the little farm pack that I bought, and this was the cat that was in it. And, you know, John said it looked like a gerbil. <laughs> so when we went to St. Pete yesterday, I'm showing pictures because I didn't lug all this stuff with me. But I'm showing pictures to his two sisters at separate times. So I show it to Dana and she's just seen the picture and she's like, a gerbil. And I'm like, you are so related to your brother. Just, it was just funny because, you know, she didn't say hamster. She didn't say guinea pig. Or gerbil. Same thing John said. Gerbil. So then I'm showing the pictures to Lori and she said gerbil. I'm like, all right. Now, now I'm on a mission. I am on a mission because that's three people. Well, We'll say two people because you can't count John. He can't ever guess them right. Well, 95% of the time he doesn't guess them right. So I'm on a mission to make my cat look like a cat. Now, some of you guys said it was the ears. Now, this is done the way the pattern said to do it. So scrolling through Instagram, I came across this free pattern and it's like, what is cuter than a cat? A cat in a box. Well, so it shows this cat in a box. Well, the box part is free, but you have to buy the cat. So I it didn't have a link to the patterns or anything that I could find. So I was on a mission. I went on a hunt and I found the pattern for the cats. They're pretty pricey for what they are. And I just like tossed it around and I said, all right, I'm going to buy it because it just is so cute in the box. So I'm sitting there making this yesterday morning and Jenna comes in and I'm going, something's not right. The, the colors are not lining up. It's, it's something's wrong with this. I could not figure out what it was. 
it was not an easy pattern to use. The, the format, the way it was written was weird. Like you start off with say your eight, whatever it was, I don't remember, in your magic circle. And then it says, if you do the traditional V style stitch, you do it this way. If you do the X stitch, which is the yarn under, you do it this way. And in my mind, I'm like, what's the difference? Why should your stitches have to be in a different spot because you yarn under versus yarning over? Well, I do the under over, so I went with option two. That might be why it didn't turn out right. But if you see right here, these lines did not line up. This side did, kind of but this side didn't, and it was so weird. So I'm just following the pattern, going in the stitch order that it said. I didn't try to adjust like where a bobble stitch landed or anything like that, but look at this cat. <laughs> his legs are over here, his head is over this way. If you look at him from the back, his legs are, <laughs> he is so twisted, he looks like he's, um, rounding a corner or something, but yeah, so I did, I was not thrilled with this pattern, and I started to try it again, and I said, nope, and I tossed it aside, I said, I am going to pull out barn cat, or farm cat, whatever you want to call it, and I am going to try and rework this one, and make it look more like a cat instead of a gerbil, so this is what I came up with. And the ears are a little pointier. I used the safety nose instead of stitching it on like that. I did my own color combination. I wasn't worried about how they had the colors. I just did my own thing. I used cream and black. And I wanted the tail that's sticks up whiskers. That was whiskers tail. <laughs> I wanted the tail to stuck up like on this one. So um, I just did a chain and skipped three stitches. And then in order to make it stand up on this part close to the body is slip stitches, like three slip stitches and then regular single crochet. And I think I did three, maybe four rounds like that with the slip stitch on the body side until it was, I did it until it was sticking up so that it would stick up like that. So I went back to the free pattern to get the box because what's cuter than a cat? A cat in a box. Is that not just the cutest thing? So for the box, I used a Big Twist Posh in their whatever cutesy color name is for the brown. And this is cream and black and parfait chunky. But he fits in there so nicely. And his little tail sticks up. And it's just the cutest thing. So, I have a cat in a box. At least this cat won't eat the box. Toby. Toby chews on all the boxes. Just... These, I am going to make more of these in the box. You don't have to use brown on your box. You can use any color you want on a box. Boxes come in all colors, shapes, and sizes. And um, I'm going to make some cats in a box for my market. I just think it's really cute. So there's that. But I might try doing it different on the box. You do the bottom is single crochet, and then when you're doing the sides, it's half double crochet, and I'm sure that's to build the sides up faster, but I think I'll do single crochet so that it's a little firmer. I picked the posh for the box because it feels like it has more structure than the parfait does, but I think I'm going to try it with single crochet instead of half doubles. I just love that. It is so stinking cute. It is so cute. 
the cat in a box. Dr. Seuss should have came up with a cat in a box instead of a cat in a hat. Except for cat and hat rhymes. He probably would have done a fox in a box because that rhymes, but it's just cute. But that is what I was able to get done this week. And it's more than what I thought once I laid it out here on the table. But I was just thinking, gosh, I've hardly done anything. I've had so many interruptions throughout the week. But yeah, I just had so many interruptions through the week, you know, because life sometimes just gets in the way. I felt like I didn't have much done, but I had a lot more than what I thought. On that note, we are going to dash on out of here and head over to this video, and I will meet you over there.